Welcome to this rising course. Thank you very much for buying. By the end of this course, you will learn how to make setups that look like this, this, and this. So, before we get started, just some basic intro. What exactly is rising? In the car scene, it stands for race inspired cosmetic enhancement. So, things to just make a car look like it goes fast without actually doing anything to it like chrome rims or a big spoiler. Okay, but this is just car stuff. Where's Linux, you might be thinking. For us Linux users, it's just customizing our desktop to make it look pretty. That's it. Usually it's form over function. Some users dial up the transparency and blur on their windows up so high that it's pretty much unusable, but looks nice. Then, some basic terminology. Dot files. Dot files are config files that start with a dot that are basically just used to configure apps. Like this could be a dot config folder that you have in your home directory, or it could be the dot zsh rc file if you're using zsh as your shell, which is used to customize the zsh shell. So it's files like that, which are basically used to just configure different apps. Then we have window manager. A window manager is an app that be manages how windows appears and behave. So if I just pull up a couple of windows here, what I have right here is a window manager, which is Hyperlan. It is deciding how each window is going to appear on the screen and behave. In this case, when I hover over a window, it changes the border color and makes it focused. Or when I move it around, it decides how things actually get moved around. That's what a window manager is. Then we have a desktop environment. It's a complete graphical interface that provides all the tools you'd want. So that could be something like GNOME or KDE, which gives you pretty much everything you could need, like a terminal, a web browser, text editor, and so many more things. It's pretty much like Windows or Mac OS, just on Linux. They give you everything that's pre-built and ready-made so that you can just get started with using it. This is the best option if all you're looking for is a setup to get started and not have to configure much yourself. Right, so because there are so many Linux distributions and so many desktop environments and window managers to choose from, the ones that stand out to us Ricers the most are the most customizable ones. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a window manager and not a desktop environment because they just happen to be more customizable. We can change many more things about a window manager than we can with a desktop environment. We now have to choose between two factions, either X11 or Wayland. Under X, we have window managers like i3, PSPWM, and DWM. And under WLAN, we have Hyperland, Sway, and Neri. Now, the problem is, X is old. Let's say you wanted to choose an X window manager like BSPWM or DWM. Thing is, X is old, inefficient, less secure. You can't scale the size of your apps to 125% if you wanted to, and it doesn't have gestures. Not just that, it's slowly being phased out. A WLAN compositor, which is not a window manager in that case, is then your best bet at future-proofing your system and inverting all the problems I mentioned, like no gestures, less speed, no smooth animations, and more. And out of all the Wayland compositors, picking Hyperland is the best option because you get even more features like plugins and an entire ecosystem of apps like Hyperlock, Hyperpaper, and Hypercursor, to name a few. Support is also great. Hyperland's repo has around 24,000 stars on GitHub, and there are way more users than just that. One last thing, my story. I made a couple of mistakes on the way, and listening to my story might give you pointers on how you can avoid them. You can skip if you want to, but if you're anything like me, you might find it interesting. The distro that I first started out with was Pop! OS. So when I switched to Linux in 2021, it was August or pretty sure it was August. In August of 2021, it was the lockdown, online classes were going on, and I'd just gotten into learning more about operating systems and Windows and Linux and the software side of things. I'd started coding. Uh, I used to go to coding classes and stuff. Uh, so I, used, I learned that 
first language I ever touched was Python and then it was HTML, a bit of web development. And soon after that, I came across Linux and I found out that it had a lot of stuff about it that could be changed. Like you, for example, you weren't limited to the single font that Microsoft shoved down your throat. You could use whichever font you wanted. Like for example, this bar over here, I could, you could use a monospaced font. I could use anything. I could customize any part of Linux that I wanted to. It's not like on Windows where you can just change the wallpaper and call it a day. Or yeah, sure, you could theme Windows to an extent, but you had to install lots of potentially unsafe apps using some stuff like Rain Meter to get widgets on your desktop. That's not really seamless or efficient. So I got started, took the, I had a flash drive. So I just took that, flashed Pop! OS onto it. I was scared to be honest, because I thought that well, the drivers or something wouldn't work and the trackpad wouldn't work or something. I came up with some excuse and delayed it for like a week or something until the point when <laughs> I grew a pair of balls and just installed it that day. That day when I installed Pop OS, I swear it was it was one of the happiest days in this Linux journey. The journey that I first started out on. It was absolutely amazing. I spent, I think, pretty much the rest of and and not to mention, online classes were still going on. I remember. It was Hindi class. I had set up my online classes on another laptop or my phone and I kept it on the desk next to me. And I was literally installing Pop! OS on the main laptop, this machine that I have right here, um, <laughs> during, in the middle of class. So that's very nice. <laughs> okay. And yeah, that's pretty much how I got started. After that, it was distro hopping from there to Manjaro KDE didn't like it, switched back to Pop! OS. Again, you know how it is when you first discover that there are more than one, there is more than one distro in Linux. So it was Pop! OS, Manjaro KDE, Manjaro i3, all those Arch-based distributions, tried Ubuntu once, but absolutely despised it. Ubuntu had way too much bloat. I tried Arch Linux once. The Problem was, I did not know how to use it. So even if I had a fully working system, I had no clue how to configure it or do anything on there. So I erased a fully working Arch Linux system, got Pop! OS back onto it, used that for some more time, and finally switched to Arch Linux along the way. Tried Arctic Linux too, thought that it'd be something, a distro which had perhaps a bit less bloat, in terms of the init system than Arch Linux. So I tried that, didn't like it. And now here I am, good old Arch, by the way. So yeah, that's my story. In the next module, we will be discussing how we can install Arch Linux very quickly to Rice Hyperland on it. You can use any Linux distribution you want, just that some packages might not be available on that distro and so you'll have to go hunting for it on your own to the Google. Apart from that, if we install Arch Linux, it's pretty much built for customizing because every, pretty much every Linux riser uses Arch. So it should be very easy to customize Hyperland in that case. See you then.